Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 12, or video 5 in the subsection of Maxwell's equations. Specifically, I'm going to discuss how to solve a second order ordinary differ differential equation. The previous videos to this, which are relevant, are number 8, where I discussed Maxwell's equations, 9, where I discussed and derived the wave equation, 10, where I showed you how to manipulate sinusoids and co uh, cosinusoids to become complex exponentials, and 11, where I discussed separation of variables. So basically, in video 11, we proved or we derived through separation of variables an equation looking something like this. And this is a second order ordinary differential equation. And the reason it's second order is because we have, this is the second derivative with respect to x. So we could, re we could write it this way if we like. It's ordinary because there are no partials and it clearly it's a differential equation. Now it also has constant coefficients and namely here we have k squared. So what I'll show you is how to solve a second order ordinary linear differential equation with constant coefficients. Now I've done a series of videos solving these equations in detail in the past. So for that reason I'm going to do this just very quickly and if you want you can check out my other videos. So let's just write this down again. So we have the second derivative with respect to x is equal to a constant squared times the function itself. So x is a function of, of small x like that. Now if you remember from your schooling, when you're when you're factorizing equations you came up with a, an equation something like this, it had minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And what we do here is we use the same equation but in a, in a different form. So what we do is we rewrite our ordinary differential equation as follows. We must have a coefficient on one of 1 on our second derivative and we rewrite it so that it looks like a quadratic, a quadratic equation. So it's like this. And we have this equal to 0. Now we must make sure that we have a coefficient of 1 on our second derivative. Notice, of course, in this particular case, we have a coefficient of 0 on the first derivative. All right, so what we do then is we assign the coefficients to the letters a, b, and c in, in this particular formula here. So that means a is equal to 1, 0 is it, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to plus k squared. So the solution is going to be as follows we have minus b plus or minus, so it's going to be 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times k squared. k squared like that, okay? And we divide the lot of this by twice a, which is going to be 2. Now, in actual fact, just for convenience, and I'll you, you'll understand why in a moment, I'm going to change this to plus k squared. So when it comes back here, it's minus k squared. And that means when it goes up here, it's also minus k squared. All right. So this is going to give us two solutions as a function of x. So if we, if we look at this, this is going to give us a real solution. Namely, it's going to give us twice k over 2, which is going to give us plus or minus k, like this. Note that this is a real number. And this is very important. So the general solution to a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients is capital of x of small x in this particular case is an ex exponential to a certain power outside of a, a constant, let's say a, times the cosine of something plus b times the sine of something. We need the constants in order to fit the boundary conditions. So when you're solving a general equation, you, you can just keep the constants as they are there. Now this particular equation is a function of x. That means we have to sub that in here, here, and here. The next thing we do is we note that in this particular solution, one part of it is for real solutions to, to our equation up here, our characteristic equation as it's known, and one part is for our, uh, our imaginary solutions. So our imaginary solutions go here, and our real solutions go here, like this. 
So what we do then is we plug in the real solutions where they are and if, if we don't have imaginary solutions we plug in zero or if we don't have real solutions we plug in zero. So in this case we don't have imaginary solutions so I'm going to plug in zero. And I'm going to plug in plus or minus k. Now of course it's going to give us two solutions we could write a second solution with minus k. So let's just for the moment keep this as positive k. Like that. Note by the way that the sine of naught is naught but the cos of naught is 1. So that means our actual solution, capital X of x, is just going to be a times e to the kx. So after getting an exponential solution, a real exponential solution, because there is no iota. All right. Now, what happens if we got an imaginary solution? So going back to our second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, let's say this time we call the constant outside negative k squared. And it's going to become a positive k squared down here. And once again, it's going to become a positive k squared up here. So that means we're after getting, we're going to get a complex solution. Now, how do we deal with a complex solution? Just bear with me and I'll show you. So obviously, when we're talking about compl complex solutions, we're going to need complex numbers in order to take the square root of this particular, uh, this particular expression. So I'll just clear this up here. So in order to do this, we have in this case zero, plus or minus, and what I do is I take I multi I excuse me I add an iota. That's the square root of minus one. That means I can swap the sides of the argument of the uh, the square root. So it's going to be four k squared minus zero, all over two. So this time the solution is going to be plus or minus iota times k. Once again, it's going to give us two solutions namely positive and negative. Now going back to our general solution, so it's capital X of X is equal to e to the something multiplied by a cos plus b sine. It's a function of X of course, so we plug in the fact that we have a function of X. Now, I said that the imaginary solutions are for the trigonometric functions cosine and sine. So we plug in k, not ik, just plug in k like this. But we just, in this case, we don't have any real solutions. So it, this, the coefficient on the exponential is not. Or, excuse me, the argument of the exponential is 0. e to the naught is 1. So the solution is just going to be a cos plus b sine. So this, in this case, we're after getting real sinusoids, or real harmonic functions. Now what happens if your solution somehow gave you both a real solution a real solution and a complex solution? Let's say for example our b was non-zero. Let's call it let's call it b. Like this. So that means our solution when we solve the characteristic equation is going to be minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4k squared over 2a, which is just going to be twice 1, which is 2. In this case, it's, let's say, and let's say, for example, k is greater than b. So we're still getting imaginary solutions. So the next step, of course, is take, to take out iota again. And we're going to have 4k squared minus b squared over 2. So this is going to give us a, a complex solution, a plus bi. So let's just rename it, let's say, or let's say um, c plus di. Let's say the solution looks like this. It's plus or minus c plus di. So going back to our general solution then, capital X of x is going to be e to the something a function of x outside a cos plus b sine a function of x. Like that. So all we do is plug in the components we had here. So the imaginary components are for the trigonometric functions. And the real components are for the exponentials. So in this case, we get the most general. We have an exponential times a cosine and uh, an exponential times a sine. 
Now notice of course that we could decide whether or not we want to take the uh, the cosine and sine or trigonometric solutions or the exponential solutions by changing the sine on our separation constant. So if you go back to video 11 and discuss separation of variables. So this is our separation constant. So by changing this from plus to minus or vice versa, we change the solutions. Now of course we don't change the physics, we just change how the solutions look. So in a previous video I showed you that we could easily convert the trigonometric functions cos and sine to complex exponentials using Euler's formula. Okay, so that's all I've got to say about this particular video. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the box below. Thank you.